I will mute everybody's microphone here so that uh, you don't have to hear any background noises. We will start with some reflective question before we start that. Let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to learn everything he wants us to learn today. Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening my god like thank you for giving us this day everything that happened everything that you did we did father we commit in your hands and surrender it at your feet at the foot of the cross i thank you holy spirit and we welcome you i thank you lord for coming and teaching us about your kingdom for the reason that you created this planet earth and us and put us here and gave us this assignment help us to understand our role and each of my brother's assignment in the kingdom, Father, open the eyes of our understanding that we may know the hope of your calling and fill us with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your kingdom and your righteousness. And we give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for covering us with your glory this evening. Just like you came down in the garden in the, in the cool of the day to talk with Adam and Eve, we welcome you. Father, to talk to us. Lord Jesus, you are the teacher. Come and teach everything that you want us to hear today. We welcome. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. We have some reflective questions about the last lesson we had, lesson two. Hope you read the reading assignments because that book has more material than I'm teaching here. We are not going page by page because that will take me three months to cover everything in that book. We are going by major concepts from the book, major immediate and important concepts. So true or false? So if you can see this questions actually supposed to come one by one, but they're all there. <laughs> so when I read one, if it is true, you go thumbs up. If it is false, show thumbs down. So number one, Adam was created to die and go to heaven. <laughs> thumbs down. Adam was not created to die. He was supposed to be on the earth forever and forever as long as he was alive. Death came because of sin. Kingdom means a type of music and a style of worship. <laughs> mm. Money is a component of the kingdom of God. Remember the 12 components we learned? Is money, is one of those 12? Nope. <laughs> money is not. Money is, money is of this world. Kingdom economy is different. Money is different. This part is economy of this world system. Gospel of the kingdom is all about making it to heaven when we die. No, it's false. God has appointed Israel as the timepiece for the church. That is a critical question, but it is, it is false. God did not appoint Israel as the timepiece for the church. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, this, when this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world, in all the nation as a witness, then the end will come. He didn't say when the third temple will be built in Israel, that's the end of the world. Nope. Jesus did not say any of those things. Jesus preached the gospel of prosperity. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. After the resurrection, Jesus taught about us waiting to go to heaven after the resurrection. Nope. That is false. Filling the blanks. I hope you can see the words on the top. My video is... The purpose behind all religion is to... Which word will fit into that blank? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven are there. So which will go into that blank? Just show me the number. One, two, three, four. 
religion the purpose behind all religion is to blind mankind from coming to the true knowledge of god and why he created them and to hide the message of the kingdom number six yes from us a kingdom is a which number will go there kingdom is number seven territory or a nation ruled by a king number three so a kingdom is a territory or a nation ruled by a king then the last one when something entered humans what entered humans sin and their humans they lost the ability to sing well no <laughs> to think right number four and to there's only one more left number one to see themselves as god sees them very good you guys are getting a plus multiple choices in the beginning the meeting place for god and man man god and man and between heaven and earth was called bethlehem zion garden of eden garden of gethsemane garden of eden that was the meeting place for god and man true or false again mankind's job was and is to expand and establish the kingdom and the will of god on the earth true or false true the two kingdoms operating on the earth right now are the kingdom of god and the kingdom of darkness actually there are three kingdoms there's kingdoms of men so it's kind of true <laughs> man should put trust in themselves alone and not in god false discussion questions actually you can uh, list some of the 12 components of a kingdom and think about how that area relates to your personal life how can you fit kingdom of god into these areas of your life anybody remember the 12 components the king government territory family culture economy govern uh, educational system decrees and laws and some more i don't remember all of them <laughs> so right now we are going to start with a prayer it's called the kingdom alignment prayer i hope you can see this we are going to pray together loud as you can and you and you pray as you mean it in your heart and loud as you can you can hear it the atmosphere can hear it uh, you don't have to unmute the uh, microphone you just pray there wherever you are and i'm going to pray it with you this is a kingdom alignment prayer we are bringing our life into alignment with the god's plan and his kingdom and what god is doing on the earth today so when i say one two three you start praying ready one two three heavenly father i come to you through your son jesus christ father thank you for loving me and saving me and making me a citizen of your kingdom father remove anything and everything from my whole being that does not belong to you and your kingdom beginning at the subatomic level sanctify my spirit soul and body to become a body that gives you legal access to operate on the earth i bring the frequency of my spirit soul and body beginning with the subatomic level and the frequency of each organ of my body in full alignment with the frequency of the kingdom of heaven father please make me part of what you're doing on the earth today in jesus christ's holy name i pray amen and amen so you know the most powerful prayers that you can pray is father make me part of 
what you are doing on the earth today. That prayer changed my life. That's one of the most powerful prayer anybody can pray and your life will never be the same. So today's lesson begins with benefits of seeking God's kingdom. I think that's where we left off last week. So what are the benefits of seeking God's kingdom? Jesus told us to seek what first? A mega church, revival, a developed country? No, Jesus told us to seek his kingdom first. He didn't even say seek him first, but to seek his kingdom first because that much our life is connected to his kingdom because that is his priority. So number one benefit of seeking God's kingdom is it provides man's basic needs. No one needs to live in hunger. How does it work practically? How does it, uh, what does that mean? Remember, God created us and put us on the earth to fulfill a kingdom assignment for him. Our purpose is connected to his kingdom. And we learned that uh, from the beginning, why we study God's kingdom from the first lesson. And God made a commitment to provide for every individual who are fulfilling his assignment for them. That's what he did for Adam. Adam didn't work for his food. Adam didn't ask God for a garden. Adam didn't ask him for nothing. The father knew what are the things Adam would need. That's the same thing Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. Before you ask these things, your heavenly father knows that you need it. Look at the birds, how they're living. They're fulfilling their purpose for which I created. They're flying. As long as they're flying, they will find their food. I want to prophesy to you, my friends, as long as you're fulfilling God-given assignment, God is faithful to provide everything you need in your life. That is called kingdom living. And there are other living. We can depend on our own strength. We can make, try to make our own living. That's what majority of the people are doing because they are not fulfilling their kingdom assignment. That's why they need to be part of this kingdom school to discover their God-given assignment. So number one benefits of seeking God's kingdom. That's what Jesus promised in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. What will happen as a result? You will go to heaven. No. All the things you need will be added to you. That's the promise. Old Testament, New Testament, same thing. God will not change his purpose based on who is ruling our country. Which type of government is ruling a country? No, God's purpose is eternal. And it is still true today. And that's how, and it's not just people who are in ministry I'm talking about, you know, preachers. Whatever God called you to do, that is your ministry. I just shared a, a video from a president of a country in Africa, Malawi. My goodness, I was so happy to, I was happy to see that. The president that, he, that just took charge of that country is a born-again believer. Kingdom government is happening in nations of the world. So somebody asked him a question. You know, he was in preaching ministry before, in church-related. Then he went to politics, ran for president, and he became a president. So somebody asked him, hello, Mr. whatever his name was, I forgot. What if you lose in the election? Are you going to go back to your ministry? He said, no. If I become a president, that is my ministry. Whatever God created to you to do, that is your ministry. So put, please don't put ministry in a box that is only within the church related. No. Joseph was a prime minister. That was his calling. He was a minister. Daniel was a statesman in Babylon. That was his ministry. Esther became a queen. That was her ministry. 
Number two benefit, second benefit of seeking God's kingdom, it helps people discover their purpose. Number one problem on this earth today is purposelessness. People don't know why they are here. When you don't know why you are here, people will do anything. That's why they're doing crazy things all over the world in our streets because they don't know why they're here. They will go with any movement. Anybody who says something, they will go after that. So when you seek God's kingdom, number one thing will happen to your life is you will discover your purpose. That is a result, number one result. You will know why God created mankind. Number third benefit, it restores human value. What is the value of a human being? Is much more valuable than the whole creation. Jesus said, if God provides and knows about a little sparrow or a little lily that grows on the field and withers next day, and he said, how much more valuable are you? We are the most valuable creation. Why, why do we think God doesn't care for us? Why, why do we people think God doesn't provide for us? No, he does. But he will do that only within the kingdom context. As long as we fulfill the purpose he created us to do, he is committed to provide for us. So it restores human value. People don't value life anymore. It liberates mankind from poverty. Poverty came as a curse because of the fall of Adam. Adam was not poor. Adam was not rich. Adam had everything he needed to fulfill his assignment in the garden. And the only thing that will set free from poverty, you know, we live in the most developed, blessed country on this planet Earth, but there are plenty of poor people here. Sometimes it's a different form of poverty that we don't recognize. Many of the things that we use, we don't own. We borrow from the banks and other places, credit companies. There are many people homeless. The solution is kingdom the gospel of the kingdom. When people discover their God-given assignment, poverty will be broken off of people's life. Number fifth, it is the only hope for humanity. We have tried everything else, every form of government, every form of entertainment, every type of luxury, every kind of technology, we tried everything and life is not working. Can you see that around us? <laughs> the lockdown, a little virus messed our life up. Life is not working. Why? Because we left our first love. We left our first mandate that God gave to us, which is how to dominion in Genesis chapter 1, 26. And people are even afraid to talk about dominion these days. Many churches won't mention that word from the pulpit. Can you believe people are afraid to talk about the very reason God created them? You think the birds are afraid to talk about flying? The birds are, or the fish is afraid of talking about swimming? No. They are not out of their mind. <laughs> Dominion is the purpose for which God created mankind. Do not be ashamed of it. Preach it from the rooftop. And God will never change his mind concerning mankind. That is our eternal purpose from creation. Creator, actually. The sixth benefit of seeking God's kingdom is it liberates mankind from racism and caste system. Here we are dealing with racial issues. In the East, we deal with the caste system. Why? Because we lost the kingdom. When you come into God's kingdom, you become citizen of the same kingdom, children of the same father, member of the same family. There's no racism in the kingdom.
God didn't create a white man, a Jewish man, or an Indian man. God created Adam. He was not Jewish. He was not Indian. He was not American. He was not white. He was not African. He was a human. <laughs> and we have made this all these divisions into mankind. Even today, when we watch the news, they, they tell you, oh, this black man did some, white man did something. What kind of craziness is this? We are not white and blacks. We are the children of the Most High. Every individual is created in the image and likeness of God. It allows us to live free from worry. You know, worry and stress are two of the most damaging components to human health. The more you worry, it doesn't change anything. The more you stress about something, it doesn't solve the problem. It solely damages our well-being. So Jesus said three times in Matthew chapter 6, do not worry about what you're going to eat. Do not worry about tomorrow. And do not worry about what you're going to wear. So when you live in God's kingdom, what if somebody promises us or guarantee us and tell us from now onwards until the day you die, your food, your clothing, your accommodation is guaranteed 100%. Will we worry again about food? No. And that's what Jesus did. He said, if you seek my kingdom and my righteousness, you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat. It become kingdom responsibility to take care of you. Just like an ambassador going to another country from one country to represent its government. Whose responsibility to take care of that ambassador? That's why we are called the ambassadors of Christ. When an ambassador goes from the United States to India, he doesn't land at the airport looking at the rental ap um, apartment rental book, you know, where we can rent a room that night. No, all his housing, his children's education, everything is set up before he arrived there. That's the way God created us, sent us to this planet Earth. Before you arrived here, everything you need was set up here but we were hijacked by a different world system that told us you have to go to school, then you have to get a job, then you have to work your butt off. Otherwise, you are going to starve and die. That survival spirit came into us. And everybody is trying to survive and trying to kill each other. Gospel of the kingdom is the solution. Number seven, it liberates mankind from struggling to survive. Why people cheat, kill, lie, corruption in government, corruption in businesses, corporations, because they're afraid. They're afraid they will die if they don't do those things. But when the kingdom comes, it guarantees mankind their provision. And they don't have to struggle to survive anymore. There's plenty of food on this planet earth for every human being there's plenty of space on this earth for every single human being plenty of room for us so since we know now why jesus told us to seek his kingdom first and the benefits of seeking god's kingdom we are going to go and learn the things god gave to adam without ever asking him <laughs> what are the things god gave to adam who was adam adam was the son of god luke chapter 3 verse 38 says adam was the son of god number one thing that god gave to mankind is his image and likeness whether you are a christian hindu Whatever religion, whatever faith that you believe, you and I are created in the image and likeness of God. Regardless of what we believe, this comes with our birth. This is not talking about believers. This is not talking about only charismatic or Pentecostals. 
every human being born in the image and in the likeness of God. What does that mean? It means our spirit man was created to function and to live like God. What does that mean? Our spirit man was created to live and function like God. So the more you know God, it's supposed to help us know more about ourselves. If you want to know God, study. No, if you want to know about ourselves, study about God. That's what theology should do to people. I spent five years in cemetery. I'm sorry, seminary. They didn't teach me who I was. I learned some history and this and that, and there was not even one subject about the kingdom of God, the most important subject Jesus preached and taught. So you don't have to be a Christian to make a spaceship and go to the moon. You don't have to be a born-again believer to own a multinational company. That is the nature of God in man to establish, to create, to invent. But something happens to people when they come to church, which I don't understand yet. I'm still searching why there is no productivity in the church, why there is no creativity in the church, why there is no invention coming out of the church, why the people in the world are coming out with new products every day, inventions every day, and we use it. Then we come to church and sing, we don't belong to this world. Second thing God gave to mankind is God's spirit, the breath of life. God breathed into man's nostril. He became a living soul. John chapter, uh, not John, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Jobs 30, 33 verse 4 says, His spirit is what gives us life. Every human being, what gives us life is his spirit. When his spirit leaves, we, we are dead. Number three, the third thing that God gave to Adam was sonship, position or relationship with God. Adam was the son of God. Adam carried the DNA of God. Can you believe that? Because when we are born, we receive the DNA of our father. Adam came from God and he carried the same DNA of God. Woo, that is so powerful. We carry the DNA of our heavenly father when you're born again. The same life, same creativity, same wisdom and knowledge, same authority. When Adam speaks a word, it is like God speaks in, on the earth, just like God speaks. Whatever Adam did, it affected the entire creation. One man, sin, affected the entire human race, the entire planet earth. But the good news is, one man's salvation that came through one man will affect every human being and every creation on this planet Earth. We better believe that because the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, not for more believers. We have more believers today, but we have few sons of God on this planet Earth. Who is a son? The son is an heir of his father's property. Adam, the rulership of the earth was given to Adam. It was his birthright to rule this planet earth because he was God's son. But he lost that sonship when he said, the day that you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall die. He was not talking about a physical death. He was talking about the death of his sonship. Man lost the ability to relate with God as a son, father, basis. But through Jesus Christ, that position has been restored to us. But we are still haven't matured to relate with God as our father. What was Adam required to do 
before he met with God in the garden every day. Just think about that for a minute. What, were, what are the rituals Adam was supposed to perform? What kind of gymnastics his father expected him to do before he showed up in the garden? None. Why? Because it was a father-son meeting. When you go, if you're a born-again believer, when you go to your father's presence, this is a father-son meeting. There has to be no ritual required. No charismatic gymnastics required. Nothing, just like Jesus connected with his father, related and talked to his father, just like the disciples connected with Jesus while he was on the earth. That is the same privilege and position and the door that has been opened for us through Jesus Christ. The third thing, actually the fourth thing that God gave to man is God's glory. What is God's glory? What was like a feeling or what was a covering? God's glory means everything that he is. The word glory is used for the first time in Genesis chapter 45. Joseph is the first person who mentioned that word glory when he told his brothers, go and tell my father about all my glory in Egypt. That's the same word. What was the glory Joseph had in Egypt? His position, how he functioned, his servants, everything. That is his glory. And when man sinned, he came short of God's glory. Romans, that's a familiar verse to us. But God restored his glory back to us through Jesus Christ. And we are still haven't figured that out yet. The fifth thing that God gave to mankind is dominion over the entire earth. God never expected, intended for any wicked person to be in position of rulership anywhere on this planet ever. Because the right to rule was given to Adam, his son. And after Adam, his son, his son, his sons, his sons will rule the entire planet. What is dominion? Delegated authority or the right to rule. And we will learn more about this in the second course, Discovering Purpose, Calling, and Gifts. I go into much more detail on what is dominion and how you are supposed to walk in it in this day and life. Not when we get to heaven. Right now, man's eternal purpose is to rule this planet, but we won't all rule the same way. Each one of us are called to do something different. The sixth thing that God gave to mankind is wealth and resources this earth contain enormous amount of wealth and resources right gold silver diamond oil minerals gas and we have been extracting those metals and minerals and precious stones for thousands of years and we haven't exhausted yet There's plenty of it left. Why God put such an enormous amount of wealth and resources on the earth? To be used to establish his kingdom and his will on the earth. That is the reason, not for the devil. Devil didn't create nothing. God didn't create nothing for the devil. He's a thief. Somebody say amen. Amen. Who is the devil? <laughs> he is a liar and a thief. He lied to you, deceive you, and he steals from you. And he claims that it is his. No. <laughs> we have to take back what the devil stole from us. At least we have to raise up a generation who can do that. 
So every wealth and resources God deposited on this planet earth was to fulfill his purpose. Many times God says in the Old Testament, the silver and the gold is mine, says the Lord. It's not for the devil. In India, there was a discovery a couple of years ago. They found this enormous amount of treasures buried underneath a temple that worships a demon god in the southern part of India. Ebenezer might know, John might know. They might have heard it. It's in Kerala. Enormous, like $500 billion worth of treasures of diamonds, gold, and chains. And it has been buried there for like, I don't know, at least a couple of thousands of years. See how the devil stole and hiding the wealth and resources that should have been God's people. Number seven, the seventh thing that God gave to man, a garden, a place to dwell. Imagine Adam did not ask for any of these things. Father, give me something to eat. No, it was provided because our father knows the things that we need to fulfill his assignment for us. And he's faithful. So God came down and planted a garden in, in Genesis chapter 2. Who was the first farmer on this planet Earth? Adam. God was the first farmer. He came down and planted the garden. Why? Because he knows how food is important to mankind. We have been eating what the world is producing. Most of it is infected with poison. It's not good for our health. It's good for our mind. We have to go back to God's food producing system, production system. Unfortunately, we haven't even started yet any of those things because we have been waiting to disappear for so long. We have been waiting to escape. Because we got a fire insurance salvation, not the real salvation that Jesus and the apostles preached. Number eight, kingdom of God. That garden that God gave to Adam was the physical manifestation of God's kingdom on earth. God's will was done in Eden as it is in heaven. There is no sickness in heaven. There was no sickness in the garden. There's no lack or poverty in heaven. There was no lack or poverty in the garden. Life in the garden was same as life in heaven. God intended the same quality of life that is in heaven to manifest on the earth. That's what Jesus said. Let your will be done on earth. 50% like in heaven. No, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. That means there is no difference the life God wants to manifest on the earth. So God gave the kingdom of God. The entire kingdom was manifested in the garden. There was kingdom economy in the garden. There was kingdom government. Remember those 12 components? They were all in the Garden of Eden. Number nine, food or provision that man needed. Adam's food was ready when he arrived in the garden. He didn't wait three months to plant, to reap, and to harvest. He was not starving for three months. His food was waiting as soon as he landed in the garden. That is kingdom living. There's plenty of food on this planet Earth for everybody, but we don't have a proper manage, managing system. The last thing God gave to Adam was a family, his wife. God looked at this man who had those nine things that he gave to him and he said, this guy has too much to do. He need help. <laughs> So God made a helper comparable to him. That's the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2. God took the woman out of man. 
God didn't create a separate individual like he created Adam from the ground. God took the woman out of the man. So those are the 10 things that God gave to Adam. This is important for understand to understand salvation. Because when Adam fell, he lost some of those things. All these things came under defects and stopped functioning as God intended from the beginning. God said, I'm going to save this man. So that's what we're going to learn now. The eight fundamental needs of every human. We all have eight fundamental needs. When one of them is not met, we will feel unfulfilled. God knew this man need much more than a relationship with him. Because we tell people, oh, just come to Jesus. All your problems will be over. Really? People with Jesus have plenty of problems, I guarantee you. Just look around us in the church. <laughs> because we didn't tell them what Jesus came with. We gave them a homeless Jesus. We didn't give them the kingdom. That's what Jesus told to seek his kingdom first. Number one need of every human being is relationship with God. Because we came from God. We can't function without God on the earth because He's our source. We came from Him. And we are going to see when God showed me these eight fundamental needs, I didn't know Jesus included all of these eight fundamental needs in the kingdom prayer, which we call the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Heavenly Father, Hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. That prayer is called the kingdom prayer. And that prayer included these eight fundamental needs of every human being. And that's what we're going to see through this. So that prayer starts with our Father in heaven. Everybody needs a Father. I know we live in a Number one problem in the inner city and everywhere is fatherlessness. People who grew up without a father, it is they grew up with a father vacuum or a father wound. Even some people with, grew up with father, they grew up with the father wounds and then they had to get healed. I had to get healed from father wounds because of the physical, emotional abuse that I had to go through with my own natural father. I had to get healed from my soul. But God is our father. I met a person recently, no recently, maybe a year ago, and that person said, I won't call God my father. I can't call him my father because I can't picture him as my father because this person was so abused by their father their perception of God was so skewed up, screwed up. And that person hasn't found the healing yet to call God our Father. But the kingdom prayer starts with our Father, not my Father. It's a family. It's a community. Our Father in heaven. Second thing, every person need a country or a community where they feel belong, a place. Everybody need us. Or a, you know, since Adam lost the kingdom, every human being born on this planet Earth is searching for a lost country. That's why people try to migrate from one country to the other. It is an international problem. It's not a developing world or a third world problem because when I came here, people are trying to run away from this country to somewhere else because they're tired of life here. Or they're talking about a, a vacation, Hawaii or Florida or somewhere else they want to go because 
Their heart is longing for this place somewhere out there. They don't know what it is. It is the kingdom that they're longing for. Once you discover God's kingdom, you feel home for the first time. When I'm in Kenya, I feel home. When I'm in Thailand, I feel home because I live in God's kingdom, not in that country. So your kingdom come, that is the answer to that prayer in the kingdom prayer. That is the place we are looking for. That is the country. Kingdom of God is a country, not an experience, not an emotion. It is a real place, but it's a spiritual place now. The third need of every human being is a government that administers righteousness, justice, truth, and mercy or power. We all hunger for power, whether it's a spiritual, money, position, something. Government is God's idea. We cannot live without a government on the earth. Even the remote tribe in Africa as a, as a village leader or a tribal chief, that is their government. Government came from God not from the devil, but the devil took over. He stole it from us to implement his will on the earth because the religious spirit told us government and politics is of the devil. That is another lie the religious spirit told us. So what is the government? He said, your kingdom come. When God's kingdom come, his government comes. Kingdom means God's government, his way of governing his system of governing. Humans were created to govern by God and his kingdom. This earth was created to be governed and managed by heaven because that's the source. So when earth and humans functions without God and his kingdom, we have problem. Number four, significance. Every human being wants to feel significant about something about that is the that is what they feel about race racism and and this and that but the only thing that can give you significance is your purpose when you fulfill your purpose you will automatically feel significant you don't have to change the color of your hair you don't have to put 20 medals through your nose and your ears to feel significant just fulfill your purpose and you will feel appreciated. People will need you. So all come with the purpose package. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is God's will? That is our purpose. When his will is revealed, his purpose will be revealed. And our purpose is to see God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Number fifth, fundamental need, food and shelter or provision. Jesus told us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. That's how it covers the fifth fundamental need of every human being through his kingdom. Number six, fulfilling relationships. There is fulfilling and there is tormenting relationships. But our heart is longing for where we find fulfillment, being connected with the others, with our spouse, with our family. When it is not fulfilling, we feel like there's something missing. We are looking for that person, that one person that we can be connected intimately. And that's why Jesus said, forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. No relationship can survive without forgiveness. Peter came and asked Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he transgress against me? Just seven times and we just write it off? No, he said 70 times seven every day. So there's only one condition for answered prayer when Jesus taught was forgiveness. If you don't forgive others their transgressions, the heavenly Father will not forgive you. 
It is so powerful. Forgiveness is we are setting ourselves free from the offense we carry about the person who wronged us. Number seven, the seventh fundamental need of every person is safety. We want to feel safe, protection, especially with this COVID thing that is going around the world. People are so afraid. My goodness, I can't believe it when I hear from people. There are people who hasn't gone outside their home in the last three months. From day one, I've been driving. <laughs> I come to the office every day, Monday through Friday. Never, maybe I stayed home two days. Go into the grocery store. Where is the safest place to be on this planet Earth? It is in God's kingdom. Safety. So Jesus told us to pray, deliver us from the evil one. That is protection. The devil and his schemes and his traps, his temptations that he brings to our life every day. God guarantees to protect us in his kingdom. Deliver us from the evil one. Number eight, happiness or pleasure. Everybody wants to have fun, right? Let's have some fun. Especially in this culture here, everything is centered around having fun. Church has to be fun. School has to be fun, entertaining. Where do we find this fun? In God's presence. In his presence, there are pleasures. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore in Psalm 16. By knowing God is reigning, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. That should be the greatest happiness or a pleasure for a child of God to see his, their father's kingdom is ruling and reigning on the earth. That should be our greatest pleasure. Now we are going to enter into the fall of man. Things we lost because of the fall. If you don't know what we lost, we won't know what to get back once you're saved. That's what happened. We thought we, Adam fell from heaven. Adam did not fall from heaven. Adam didn't lose heaven when he fell. But what are the things Adam lost when he fell? Number one, he lost sonship. He couldn't relate with God as his father anymore. Just like a child, you know, when we come home, if you have a little five-year-old, six-year-old, when they do something wrong, they are a little shy to come in front of you to admit that they did something wrong. They try to hide. They had to call. Susie, where are you? Jack, <laughs> where are you hiding? <laughs> because they know they did something wrong. They're not supposed to. That's what Adam did when he ate the fruit that God, his father told not to eat. He was hiding in the, among the bush. But God came down searching for him that day. But through Jesus Christ, God restored our sonship. John chapter 1 verse 12, Romans 8, 15 and 17, Galatians chapter 4 verse 5 says, we are sons of God now on the earth. There are three Greek words used for children and sons, when you become a child of God in John chapter 1 verse 2, 12, you become an infant. That's how you come into the kingdom. You have to grow to become a matured son to handle our father's business on the earth. That's what in Galatians chapter 4, Paul said, a son, as long as he remains a child, is not better than a servant. God restored our sonship. So we have to learn how to connect with God as a father-son basis, not based on any religious rituals we have been taught for so many years. 
Second thing God restored to mankind is dominion, the right to rule the earth. See, the enemy stole our right to rule and gave to his children, and the wicked began to rule this planet earth. But through Jesus Christ, God restored our dominion, which is the right to rule. So Matthew 5, verse 5, that's where it began. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 28, 18, he said, go and disciple nations, not individuals. It is a national mandate, not a personal mandate. How do we disciple a nation? That's a whole different subject and a course. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus said, I have given to you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 8, Paul said, How come you guys have started reigning without us as kings? 1 Peter 2, 9 says, You are a royal priesthood, chosen generation, a kingdom of priests. Revelation 1, 6 says, God has made us kings and priests. Revelation 5, verse 10 says, God, there is singing in heaven, the 24 elders and the angels are singing in heaven about us reigning on the earth. Have you ever heard a song about us reigning on the earth? Have you ever sang a song in any church that you have been part of about us reigning on the earth? Because that's our eternal purpose. The first chapter of the Bible, the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22 verse 5 says, we will be reigning forever and forever. So that has been restored to us. God's spirit. I believe we're all spirit-filled believers. God poured out his spirit upon all flesh because we all need his spirit. Without his spirit, it is impossible to fulfill his assignment on the earth. So John chapter 14, 16, Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. He shall be in you and with you forever. Acts 2, 17, Peter said, he quoted from the book of Joel that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Romans 8, 11 says, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. Same Holy Spirit that was upon Jesus is upon us. Number four, think that we lost when we fall. Provision and shelter. Man, Adam lost his food, his lunch, which was in the garden. So since Adam lost his lunch that God gave him, he's been on his own trying to provide to survive. And that's how we reached here today in the survival mentality. But Jesus said to pray, give us this day our daily bread. And he told us to seek his kingdom first and all the things we need will be provided to us. Number six, we lost the glory of God. All have sinned and came short of the glory of God. But the good news is, through Jesus Christ, he restored our glory. John chapter 17, 22, Jesus said, Father, the same glory that you have given me, I gave it to them. Romans 8, verse 30 says, Whom he called, he glorified. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, We are transformed into the same glory, in, from glory to glory to the same image of God. We are transformed, going from glory to glory. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 says, God, Jesus brought many sons into glory. You and I can become everything God has created us to become now. The sixth thing that we lost when Adam fell was the kingdom of God. With the garden, man lost the kingdom, the country, the place God gave to them. And ever since, mankind is searching for this lost kingdom. And through Jesus Christ, he, the kingdom has been restored back to us.
And that's why we are taking this course and you will learn about it, how Jesus restored the kingdom back to us. Luke chapter 12, verse 31 and 32 says, Little flock, do not be afraid. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke chapter 22, 29 says, I bestow upon your kingdom the same way my father bestowed one upon me. And Mark chapter 9, verse 1 is the turning point in the entire gospel. Jesus said, there are some standing here will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God comes with power. That happened on the day of Pentecost. After the day of Pentecost, nobody preached kingdom at hand or kingdom near message. And we will learn more about it as we go. So with that, we will finish our lesson today. And when we come back next week, we will learn about what are the areas of relationship that were affected by the fall of Adam. That was a powerful journey, right? <laughs> That was a lot of things. You have to go over this again and again to get everything out of it because just listening in one class, it won't, it won't remain in our brain, everything. That's why I encourage people, please find somebody with whom you can share what you're learning. When you share, it become part of you. That's why many of the previous students of this course, they're starting kingdom schools, you know, they're starting to teach other groups. You don't have to start a group. You can start with a, talking with a friend on the phone, sending a message, hey, what did you know about the kingdom of God? So before we go into the, okay, no, we can go into the questions actually. So this is the time for questions comments or feedback on any of the things that I shared today because that is the Rick is already his hand is up <laughs> uh, so if you have a question or a comment just show me your hand I will unmute or if you have to unmute it there you will have to do it I think Rick you have to unmute there my brother can you hear me yeah um, in the beginning, I answered yes to the kingdom has money. If, if we have a kingdom economy, how can we not have money? See, kingdom economy is based on things that creates money. Money is part of this world system. And this world system use kingdom economy to make money, like products, raw materials, or food, or whatever, wow. this is all kingdom properties. And that's what people use to make money, to buy, to sell, to trade. That is part of this world system. So ultimately the kingdom economy does produce money, but money is not part of the kingdom. No, yeah. Am I? Am I? Yeah, Absolutely okay. Right. You're right. Okay. okay, I get it, thanks. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's kind of convoluted, but it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kingdom, kingdom economy is the things that God created in the garden in, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Uh, there are seven foundations to kingdom economy. I have a whole book on kingdom economy. So I deal with that in detail. What are the seven foundations of kingdom economy God established in Genesis chapter 1 and 2? Okay. So today, this world economy is based on those seven things God created in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Whether it is land, water, precious metals, gold. That's why many of the capital fund for countries' economy is gold, you know, gold-based economy. I think they changed that. Now they just print cash, you know, like... I was just going to say, that went out the window a long time ago. <laughs> Now, now it's a now it's a, a prayer cat. It's a prayer economy. It's a paper <laughs> money. Yeah. Now yeah. Let's hope. You know, keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That was. Thank you for that comment. Anybody else have a question or comment? Just show me your hand. 
John, you have to unmute it there, brother. Yes, brother. Uh, my question is, uh, in Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, Jesus says that in my father's house, there are many rooms and I am going to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. So how to align these words of Jesus with the kingdom's gospel? Kingdom gospel. <laughs> yeah, I did, a, I I did a Facebook live about it, uh, I think last week, about my father's house. Where is his father's house now? In my father's house, there are many mansions. That's going to take me like a 20 minutes to answer that. I will have to share that with you personally because that's not related to what we, what I shared today. So I will, I will share that with you. I will send you that okay. Facebook live link where I dealt with that. What is father's house? What is the mansion he's building right now? And where he is now, where we are. I will give you one verse actually. In, if you read John chapter 14, the following verse, Jesus answers that where he is going because Thomas asked him, Lord, where are you going? Where is the way? Because we want to come with you. And, and Jesus said, how, how come you don't know the way? I've been with you all these this three years and you're still asking me, where is the way? And Jesus said, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And in verse 14, chapter 14, verse 23, that's the key words to understand your answers. I'll just answer that right now. Verse 23 says, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Do you see that? Yes, yes, yes. Chapter 14, verse 23. So Jesus is saying, if anybody loves me, we will come and make our home. That word home mentioned there is the same word Greek used for mansion in the verse 3 in chapter 14. I don't know why translators use mansion there and home here. It's the same word. So where is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now? He is living in you. And we are being built as a holy temple in the Lord through the Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse last two verse says, we are being built as a spiritual temple for God to dwell. And that process is still going on. Yes. Because I, I feel this is one of the stronghold of the people who want to escape from this earth. Yeah. <laughs> you are absolutely right. Yeah. We have been waiting to escape because we thought Jesus is building some... There, there's no other words in the Bible that says Jesus is, built, he is doing a construction project in heaven. He's been told to be seated at the right hand of God until his enemies are made his footstool. And that's what he's doing. He's waiting. But his Holy Spirit is building something on the earth, which is in you and I, to be a dwelling place for God. That work is still continuing. Because we are his temple. Thank you. Yes, Nene. Thank you. Could I have that link that you're going to give to, to John? Yeah. Yeah, I will send you. I had to find that. I had to see which Facebook live I shared about the father's house. I will find it and send it to you. Are we friends on Facebook? Uh, am Nene? I? Yeah. I don't know that I am. No, I don't think so. Are you on Facebook? Do you use? Yes, I am. Do you use? Okay. Yeah, I will find you. Thank Any you. other questions or comments? Anybody else have? Sabrina, please unmute there. Yeah. Hey, 
So you mentioned earlier on how, can you guys hear me? Cause I hear like a really crazy background. Yeah, I hear you. John, can you unmute your, I will mute it for you. Okay, it's gone. Oh gosh, that is so much better. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned something before about how um, you can get people like in the church and some people in the church just don't do anything. And then you have these other people that are going and doing amazing things. And, you know, you think like, what's going on with the kingdom of God? Like what's going on with God's children? Yeah. And so I always, um, I've heard before, like there is two people that come to church, they hear the same word. One person is a hearer of the word and the other person is a doer of the word. So those people that are actually hearing it and then going outside of that church and actually applying God's principles to their life. And those are the ones who are actually doing it versus people just coming to church and just listening and not doing anything. And that, that made me think about like, you know, even for this class, like we're learning all these sound principle things, but if we don't go and teach it to others, like how much of it is really going to stick and be effective in our lives. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Depends on what kind of word you're hearing also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, that's true. <laughs> if the word is not about being productive, then mm -hmm. there's nothing to do with it, you know? Just right. say, go out to lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that is excellent. Anybody else? Paula, please unmute there. Yeah, you're on. Well, um, hi, everybody. So um, it, it dawned on me um, now that we're going, I'm in America. I'm, I'm in Texas. And um, That's not one amazing. of the things that, one of the things that came, to, came to me is that the reason why a lot of the people were singing about going to heaven is because there was so much sin and oppression and slavery here. We just had June 19th where, you know, they, that was the, the Texas slaves were the last um, to even know that they were free. So it's hard for people to think about kingdom here on earth when they're under so much oppression over 200 years of being bound. And so maybe that's why it just came to me. That's why they're singing about going to heaven because to them going to heaven was a way of just escaping. And so they couldn't think about dominion over here because there was nothing to really look at. That's what I see from the, anyway. But it's not just them. Here. Everybody's singing that same song. You know, it's not the people who are being oppressed who are singing that song. It is a general church hymns that we have been singing, you know, this world is not my home. Oh, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. And I've been singing that, you know, in the class before. And the devil came and took the whole world. We have Jesus, but we lost the world. But this world was given to us uh, by God, created by him, because this world was made by him. John chapter 1, verse 10, John 3, 16, which I didn't understand because I was so blinded by the religious spirit. John 3, 16, mm -hmm. we learned from Sunday school, God so loved the world and nobody knows what the world is. Cosmos. Right, and that's, that, that's my point. The world was so kind of messed up that yeah. it was hard for people to see beyond. They're you know, going up. You know, I was just talking to my friend the other day. She just had a birthday and she was saying, all the people who have died are in a better place than us. You know what I mean? They are just kind of already have escaped this thing that the, you know, the afterworld is a better place than. So anyway, it's in going to encourage me to spread the, the dominion word. Of, you know, um, but I'm just telling you where kind of the root is yeah. of why people lost hope here. Yeah, that's true. Jesus said one of his last parable about the talents, he says, occupy till I come. Right. That is his, that is his order. So I believe that is the last comment or questions you have. I have, okay, go ahead, uh, Thomas. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to also try follow why we lost the kingdom for that long? 
and I think that one of the things I saw during the ministry of Jesus Christ is that the people were too familiar because they thought they knew him. They thought nothing good should come from him. And probably that's why they lost the kingdom. I, I, I don't know. No, the, the devil hates God's kingdom or the gospel of the kingdom because the mm -hmm. devil wants to keep his kingdom on the earth. He doesn't want to see God's kingdom coming here because that is the that was his original plot he played against mankind god put mankind on the earth to establish god's kingdom and his will and jesus came with the kingdom 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 day and night for three and a half years and they still missed it and the jewish people they said we don't want this kingdom because we are looking for a jewish kingdom just for israel and in Matthew 21, Jesus said, the kingdom will be taken from you and give to another nation that bears its fruit, which is the church. We are a nation. And he gave the kingdom to us, like in Matthew, uh, Luke chapter 12, 32, all these words that we just read. But the devil stole it from us. He hid it from us, blinded us from it through the religious spirit like we have been talking about, he put that escapist mentality saying, you don't have nothing here. You just have to wait until you die to go to heaven because that everything is going to be up there. This earth mm -hmm. and world is, doesn't belong to us. So that's what happened. But now he's bringing back more than ever. God is restoring the gospel of the kingdom mm -hmm. all over the world, my friends. I am so excited about it and I am so convinced because more people are beginning to talk about the kingdom message than any other time that I've been around or in the last hundred years. And that, yeah. and there is hope. And that's why you're part of the school now. Yeah. Last year, there was no kingdom school. <laughs> so thank God for the pandemic. This school was birthed because of the pandemic. Is something right. good come out of pandemic? Yes, we did. The gospel of the kingdom is going all over the world. People are trained in the kingdom. Because I was so booked to travel to Philippines, to Dubai, to India. And God said, no, I have a different agenda for you. Start the kingdom school. And now we have three courses. So that's what I want to share with you. Uh, the registration for the second course is open since yesterday. So the second course is discovering your purpose, calling, and gifts. Then the third course is seeing, entering, and manifesting the kingdom. So admission or registration for all those three courses in August are open now. So make sure I want to give you the first chance. I didn't announce this publicly on the Facebook page. I only told the Kingdom Advancement Group. And to the classes, I want to give you the first chance to sign up because the courses are free, but you'll have to buy the books that goes along with it. So since I am teaching these courses absolutely free, and you have to buy the books, but the courses are free, I have two small favors to ask you in return. Will you please do this for me? Two small things. Number one. I would like to hear from you a small testimony, either written or video on a phone, how this course have impacted or blessed your life. Just 90 minutes, no, 90 second mm -hmm. video, not 90 minutes. <laughs> uh, just, just three sentences. Don't, don't write an essay. Don't write to me a book. Just three sentences, how this course or these classes have impacted you before the end of the scores. There is three more classes to go, lessons to go. We are halfway through now and we have half more to go. So that is the one small favor. The second small favor that I would like to ask you is in return is introduce this kingdom school to two other friends that you know. Tell them about this kingdom school or the upcoming course and encourage them to sign up because it's free. So those two small favors that I ask in return for teaching you this course absolutely free. I think that you can do that, right? 
It's not too much to ask you. <laughs> a simple testimony and uh, introduce the school to two other people. Two of your friends from church, outside of the church, outside of the country, out of state, from anywhere on this planet, they can take it because it through Zoom, it is done. So I would appreciate that if you could do that for me. Did I see Katie's hand? Katie, did you? I have my hand up. Okay, Nanette, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Katie. Katie? I can see you. I can see your forehead. <laughs> I think the. There you are. Now yes, sorry. So on the side for one he was my was so every my question is how I to look. I'm sorry, the internet connection either here or there seems so weak. I didn't That's hear not good. thing you mentioned. I'm sorry. So do we have homework? We do. So please type it to the side if you can, Katie, the message. I don't know if you can type it on your phone. So Nene, are you asking for the homework or you have a question? Homework. Are you asking for homework? I am. Okay. Well, I'm just coming. So did we read chapters? Two, three, and four. Two, three, and four last week. So five, six, and heaven. Five, six, and seven. Okay. And Luke and then, chapter 19. So how do we sign up for these classes? Where's the site? Oh, yeah. Thank you for asking. Please visit our website, thekingdomnetwork.org. Thekingdomnetwork.org. Or if you put slash school, it will take you straight to the page of the school. The other one just take you to the home page. Then if you scroll down, you will see sign up for a free course about the Kingdom School. Then you choose which school you want, which day you want, which time you want. And it will, you will receive an email. And then I will send you a Zoom link later because it's August 17th is the next <laughs> semester. So okay, a, a question mark. Can anyone take it even if they haven't taken this first school? I would encourage to take this course first, discovering right. the Lord's kingdom first, then discovering purpose and calling first, then seeing and entering and manifesting the kingdom. Okay, so when can they take the first school again? Uh, August. The three courses are starting again in August. Oh, all three of them? All three of them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So please introduce at least two people. There's no limit. You can tell to 10 people. Somebody told me yesterday from another class, I told to 10 people already, when, when are you starting registration? So it just started yesterday. So there's no limit. Spread the gospel of the kingdom and we can <laughs> speak up Jesus is coming. Thank you so much. So let's quickly pray. It's almost time is almost finished thank you so much for joining today let's pray for each other for two minutes that yes, you Jesus. see on the screen yes, that Jesus. the holy spirit will make the kingdom so real to us that yes, every Jesus. blindness yes, every Jesus. deception yes, will flow from us yes, and yes, his Jesus. assignment will become so clear to us and another prayer request is pray that this kingdom school will be started in every country nation and yes, town Jesus. on this planet earth yes, Jesus. Yes, we need Jesus. a kingdom school as part of person, every church, Ebenezer, every Paula, school, Jesus, every university, Mark, every Christian business should have Katie, a kingdom school. Linda, so pray that right now. Eddie, Serena, you can your phone Teddy, and Don, pray. Lord, Teddy Duncan, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jason Powell, Lord, 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 Lord,
my green and all that. Father God, Nate, thank you. Katie, thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the sister Paula Cole. Jason, and thank you, Lord, for the big brother. Sister God, thank you. God, God, let your favor be upon everyone. God, strengthen us. God, use us for thy glory. Father God, let the working done. I will pay for to bless everything that comes to me. Thank you for your mercy. Every nation of the world. Let the kingdom be started in every city, nation, and country. Oh Lord, let your kingdom be started in every city, all the universities, all the everywhere, the smoke of the Lord, the King of the smoke of the Lord, the heart of the Lord, we worship you, Lord, may we be conduit to the Lord, we thank you for your grace upon us, Father. I thank you for your anointing to linger, your glory to fall upon us, to manifest your kingdom and your will for us, my God. Thank you for restoring what the enemy stole from us. Seven times, sevenfold restoration. In Jesus' name, I speak over my friends, my kingdom family around the world. Sevenfold restoration, Father. Everything the enemy stole from their time, their opportunities, their potential, and to maximize it for your kingdom purpose. And we give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. So this lesson will be uploaded on the YouTube within 24 <laughs> 7. If you missed a lesson, you can go back and there watch it. It will be DTLK, Discovering the Lost Kingdom, Class B, Lesson 3. That's the way it has been listed. And you're more than welcome to join me on Facebook Live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. Some of you are already there. Appreciate that. But you're welcome to join. So thank you so much. Good to see everybody. And I will Thank see you. you next Thursday, same time, same place. And uh, please keep reading this book. Don't forget it because this is, and keep sharing. If somebody wants it, send it to them. It's free. And they can get it from our website absolutely free to the world, the whole world. So have a good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Good night. I will see.